Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we come together in this celebration of the Eucharist, we gather also our prayers, our petitions and intentions, especially our experiences of hunger, of failures, even of disappointments. We gather all of these in prayer in the celebration of the Mass, and we put all of them to the hands of our Lord Jesus. And in faith, as we bring to Him our prayers and petitions, we also put to Him our faith, especially in God, who is our giver. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their Creator and Guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread? But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoar frost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For, did not, for they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. What we have heard and know, and what our fathers have declared to us, we will declare to the generation to come the glorious deeds of the Lord and His strength and the wonders that He wrought. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. He commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna upon them for food and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels, food he sent them in abundance, 
and he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains his right hand had won. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of Him and were taught in Him. As truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and, he, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that comes forth from the mouth of God. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are celebrating this Mass without the congregation again. And uh, many of you are joining us in this Mass through uh, live streaming. We are entering again into a stricter community quarantine. In a few days' time, we will be, uh, at least here in the NCR and in other places of the country, we will be again on uh, enhanced community quarantine for a few weeks again. And uh, as we enter again into these uh, stricter lockdowns in our communities, let us, in this Sunday Mass, try to find meaning, look for consolation, and allow God to direct us in this journey again of being on lockdown, we may feel that these lockdowns have already become meaningless, have become truly a burden to our lives. But as we experience all of these, let us allow this Sunday Mass to once again open our eyes, open our hearts to God, and allow God to direct us into the proper way on how we should live in these coming weeks. Hayaan po natin na ang pagdiriwang natin ng linggo na ito, ng ating banal na misa ngayong linggo, na magbigay sa atin ng kahulugan muli Buksan muli ang ating mga isip at puso at higit sa lahat, hayaan po natin ang Panginoong Diyos ang manguna sa atin. Sapagkat kung papasok tayo sa karanasan na ito nang wala ang Diyos, pakiramdam natin ay maliligaw tayo, malilito tayo na naman. Pero hayaan natin ang Diyos ang manguna sa atin. At kapag ang Diyos ang mangunguna sa atin, magkakaroon ng direksyon. Pumasok man tayo sa ECQ, pumasok man tayo sa mga panibagong pagsubok, kapag ang Diyos ang pangungunahin natin, magkakaroon ng maayos na direksyon ang ating karanasan. Allow this Sunday Mass for God to direct us. And in this Sunday Mass, let us allow also the readings, the experiences of the people in our readings today to also teach us a lesson and direct how we are going to live our lives in these coming weeks. In our readings today, we hear a similarity in our experience. Parang mayroong pagkakaparehas kung paanong ang mga tao sa ating pagbasa ngayong araw ay parang nagre-reklamo na. Dumadaing na sa Diyos sa kanilang karanasan sa kanilang dinaranas. 
I think this is also what I hear from many people. People are starting to complain, to express their grievances, their grumblings because of the experience of hardship and hunger. Let us first go to our uh, first reading from the book of Exodus. The people of Israel fled Egypt and they were traveling throughout the desert going to the promised land for years. And in the desert, there is hardly food and drink. So, there came a time when the people started to grumble and express their complaint. They said, it would have been better for us to die in Egypt. At least we have something decent to eat. But now you have brought us here in this desert and you will ask us to die in hunger. Parang naririnig ko rin ko yan ngayon. No? Parang yan ang, ang emosyon na lumalabas sa mga tao. Lockdown na naman. Wala na namang trabaho. Hirap na namang makakain. Saan kami kahanap ng makakain ng aming pamilya? And Moses showed to the people that God will give them bread from heaven so that they could eat in the desert. And so, God said, in the evening, I will give you quail so that you could have meat. And then, when you rise up in the morning, you will see that there will be bread all around the ground, and you will pick it up. And the Israelites called this bread manna. And every day, God provided for them. And so, when the Israelites were asking Moses, what is this bread? Look at the answer of Moses. He said, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. He did not really answer the question because the answer is, What is this bread? What is the name of this bread? Moses did not give a name. He did not even describe the bread. What is the answer of Moses? This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The Lord has given you this bread. My dear brothers and sisters, the first reading teaches us that in order for us to appreciate the gift, then we must not only focus on the gift, but we must also recognize the giver of that gift. Many times, we are too focused on the gift that we have already forgotten the giver of that gift. Madalas pa nga, mga kapatid, kapag ka ikaw ay nabibigyan ng regalo, nabibigyan ng isang biyaya, madalas ang naiiwang mukha ng nagbigay sa iyo ay kung ano ang bibigay niya. Di ba madalas nangyayari yan? Ah, halimbawa, no? Ah, uh, mayroong isang okasyon, halimbawa, kasal ninyo. Minsan, ang naiiwang mukha nung giver, nung nagbigay ng regalo, ay kung ano ang niregalo niya. 
Kaya minsan pagkatapos ng kasal, makakasalubong mo yung nagregalo sa iyo. Ah, magbubulungan kayo. Yan yung nagbigay ng pitchel sa atin, no? Huwag mong pansinin, pitchel lang ang binigay niya, no? O kaya ah, yan yung dumalo ng ng uh, reception, maraming kasama pero wala namang binigay. At madalas yan ang naiiwang muka sa atin nung giver. What he gave or the gift. Most of the time, my dear brothers and sisters, when we focus too much on the gift, we forget the face of the giver. Just like in our first reading today, Later on, these people who were given quail and manna in the desert will also complain to Moses, Sawa na kami dito sa tinapay na pinupulot namin araw-araw. Sa Ehipto, mayroong kaming mas masasarap na tinapay. They will forget the giver who is God. Because they have focused too much on the gift. My dear brothers and sisters, if we focus on the gift only and not on the giver, then our hearts will become ungrateful. Kapag tayo ay nakafocus lang, nakatingin lang doon sa ibinigay sa iyo, nawawala ang pagpapasalamat ng puso doon sa nagbigay. That is why Moses reminded the people of Israel, do not just focus on the bread, focus also on the Lord who gave you that bread so that your hearts will become grateful and you will remember that in the midst of your hunger, there is a God. A God who gives. A God who satisfies. A God who does not forget your hunger. In our Gospel reading today, we also see this kind of experience from the people. The crowd who were fed by Jesus with bread. The 5,000 men who were fed by Jesus were back and they were following Jesus. And Jesus said, Are you looking for me because you ate the loaves and were filled? Parang sinasabi ni Jesus sa kanila, Hinahanap niyo ako dahil nakatanggap kayo ng tinapay. Yan lang ba ang hinahanap ninyo? Yung ibinigay ko ba ang hinahanap ninyo? O ako na nagbigay? Are we just looking for the loaf? Or are we looking for the giver of that loaf? And this was proven in the later part of their discussion when the people asked Jesus, What sign can you give us? Moses, he said, they said, Rain down bread from heaven for our ancestors to eat. And here, Jesus reminded them, It was not Moses. Remember, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. It was God who gave you bread from heaven. Jesus is reminding the people, the crowd, you are forgetting the giver. You have focused too much on the bread that was given to you. And you forgot all along the giver of that bread who is God. You have forgotten Jesus, the bread of life who has given you bread to eat. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today, let us be reminded of this also through our second reading 
from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. He said that in our faith in Jesus, we have now, we are now a new creation. We have a new self. New minds, he said, not corrupted minds because of desires, not futile minds, but minds that are renewed by Jesus so that we could live in righteousness and holiness. This is the new way of thinking that St. Paul is reminding us today. Do not just focus on the gift. Focus also on God who is the giver. My dear brothers and sisters, today, we decide not to focus only on the gifts that we have and the gifts that we don't have at the moment. Focus also on God, who is the giver. Today, I pray that you decide to be grateful instead of focusing on what we lack, especially in this time of the community quarantine. Choose also to focus on the giver so that we could have gratefulness in our hearts. Today, choose to be grateful. Aside from looking at the gifts that you have at the moment, how meager they may be at the moment, decide also to say that I have a God who does not forget my hunger. I have a God who is the giver of these gifts. And throughout my life, I can say that God has always given me, provided for me the bread that I am going to eat every day. This bread may be just a small bread at the moment, like the Israelites who ate manna. But in the midst of this small bread to satisfy our hunger, we declare and we are grateful that we still have a God who is a giver of all these gifts. When you focus on the gift, you will become ungrateful grumbling, complaining. Focus on God. Declare and recognize that God is the giver of that gift. My dear brothers and sisters, I pray that today you choose to recognize the giver of our gifts. Choose to be grateful. Do not allow yourselves to be filled with anger, complaints, and grievances. Do not allow all of these to swallow you into negativity. Today, allow yourself to recognize the giver. Allow yourself to be truly grateful to Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. At the tables of the Word and the Eucharist, the Lord nourishes us on our pilgrim way. With gratitude for His goodness, let us make our intercessions together. And for every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church in this diocese, brought into unity by celebrating Christ's sacrifice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For leaders who seek to follow ways of reconciliation, peace, and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women being prepared for reception into our Eucharistic family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For deeper reverence and devotion to the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead who rest in Christ's care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Let us also include, most specially in our prayers today, those who are sick right now, those who are fighting COVID-19, our frontliners who are taking care of the sick. All of these will lift up to the Lord. Father of Christ, the bread of life, through this Eucharist, make us grow in holiness and goodness and grant what we ask in faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <music> Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other 
the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. 
Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all those, all of you who have joined us in this celebration of the Holy Eucharist uh, in these uh, coming weeks. Uh, there will be no public masses um, here at the Manila Cathedral. And so we ask you to follow our Facebook page, the Manila Cathedral, or our YouTube channel so that you can be all, always notified of our daily uh, live streaming of our masses here in the Manila Cathedral. I know that these coming weeks will be challenging and difficult, but through our celebration of our masses, our reading of the Word of God, let us allow ourselves to be directed and led by God and acknowledge that our God is our giver, the generous giver of gifts. And we also uh, thank all of you who have sent their uh, prayer intentions, those who have sent their donations and help for the Manila Cathedral. Napakalaking tulong po ng ibibigay po ninyo sapagkat nakapagpapatuloy po ang ating misyon at ang ating gawain dito sa Manila Cathedral sa pamamagitan po ng mga ipinapadala ninyong mga donasyon at tulong. For those who are asking how they can donate to the Manila Cathedral, after this Mass, we will be flashing on your screens the different means by which you could send your help. Ano man po ang maibibigay nyo ay napakalaking tulong po sa ating simbahan, napakalaking tulong sa misyon na ating ginagawa. And so our gratitude to all of you who have continuously followed the celebrations here at the Manila Cathedral. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Lord God, from the abundance of your mercies, provide for your servants, ensure their safety, so that, strengthened by your blessings, they may at all times abound also in thanksgiving and bless you with unending exaltation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.